Now we're winding down here in St. Stephen, New Brunswick at the International Lumberjack Competition. It's been a great competition so far. Right now we got Marcel Dupuis and Don Lambert battling it out for the overall championship with a couple of other guys battling it out for third, fourth, and fifth. Right now we're heading into the water boil, often referred to out here in the Maritimes as the kettle boil. I know that's one of your favorites there, Rod, but we are going to show you a heat of six followed by a heat of seven, led by, of course, we've seen them all in front of our screen, Jeff Larkin and Paul and Melanie, Mario and Robert, a couple of borks in this particular heat as well. Here are the rules of the event. Actually, we'll let you explain the rules of the kettle boil. The competitors get a, they're, they're acts of their choice, five matches, a block of cedar, and they have a can of soapy water. They've got to build a fire as fast as they can and boil that uh, mixture up over the top of the can. Well, and certainly one of the keys, I know you've done it a lot over the years, Rod, is to what, you gotta heat up the can, right? It doesn't mean just underneath, you gotta heat up the sides as well. If you don't heat the sides, it'll just keep boiling, boiling inside, but it won't come up over the sides of the can because there's not enough heat on the sides to keep that boiling right up over the end of the can. Now, typically, I think they use about eight ounces of water. Is that what they're using here in St. Stephen, New Brunswick, eight ounces of water? One cup is what we use in St. Stephen. Now, I see a lot of them are using rocks as well. Is that because rocks hold the heat a little bit better than just building on the sand or on wood? Right on the money. It does hold the heat a lot better. Lots of different tricks that the guys use. Some guys even put uh, ca caps over the top of the can. Of course, that's against the rules here. So just whatever they can to gain as much uh, advantage over their competitors. Well, you can see Melanie Bork striking her max is a little bit late there. Some of the guys have got the flames going already. Here's Mario Bork. He's got a nice little flame there built on a bed of rocks, getting a lot of shavings, which is going to be the base of his fire as well. Donald Lambert looking really strong with his fire starting to blaze also. And one of the keys, of course, is to get the can on the fire. Otherwise, you're not, your water's not going to warm up at all. Paul Woodland doing a good job there. The faster you get the can on the fire, the faster it heats up and you boil it over. Actually, but hats off to Donald Lambert. He's here in the east and he knows if he's going to compete for the overall, he has to be able to do a good kettle boil. And so he's taking the time to get better at it. So he's got a bit of a base going here. And you can see how the competitors also build around the can. It's almost like I call it a log cabin style. Paul Wooden doing a good example of that. Now, Mr. Burke here is also building up around his can as well. Paul's got a good flame going. At this point, maybe he should be adding a little bit of hot air, per se, to make it burn faster. It, at this stage of the game, I like to have a lot of pencils around so I can be blowing on the fire at the same time that I'm also adding my last few pencils. Mario Borg, look how fast he's splitting that. See that chainmail glove on his other hand? Same here with Jeff Larkin. Guys that swing that axe really fast, that may save them a finger or two. Well, I've seen a lot of cuts over the years, certainly the college ranks, and you can see Paul Wooten now. He hasn't got a lot of hot air inside his lungs, I guess. He's waving his hat at it because it's such a big fire, he can't get too close to it. Can't now, get close <laughs> enough to blow. That's a big thing. A nice big fire is good because because you got the heat there, but he can't get close enough to blow on the thing. So he's just sitting back, splitting a little bit more. A lot of times, Bill, what you do at that stage of the game is sit back and let it boil. Well, here we go. And Mario Bork ends up with a 316 to win the first heat of the fire build. And Paul Wooden right behind him by only a second or two. Those guys, we've got to be proud of those times. Well, no doubt, Mario Bork will feel pretty good about that. But he knows Big Boyle Conrad, who's the fastest boiler in the East, is yet to come. Certainly one of the keys to water boil is keeping your flame from escaping and trying to close it all in. Is that one of your strategies, closing the fire in? Yeah, once you get the fire built up, you want to keep the shingles on and then it keeps your heat on your can, which is what you want to boil, so. Now, you, were in a, you knew you were in a tough heat there. Donald, Paul Woodland, uh, it, you know, you had to go hard, right? Yeah, I had to go. It was, it was ended up pretty close there, so I had to give it all I got, and I had a pretty good fire going, so lucky to be on first. Well, great job there by Mario. You can see what he refers to as shingles. It's the slabs of wood that actually contain the fire and it doesn't allow the heat to escape as much. Could have been the difference between him and Paul Woodland. Paul's fire was escaping a lot. No question. And of course, it was such a big fire, Paul couldn't get in close to it. With those shingles, actually let Mario get in close to actually blow on it. May have given him the advantage in that heat. Well, the time to beat is 3, 16.26, set by Mario in the last heat. We got six more competitors, including Big Moyle Conrad in this one, the guy you referred to earlier, one of the best in eastern Canada. Also, Scott Reed, he's a coach of NSAC. This event's done a lot at the college level. So here's Sean Bugby. He went to the University of Maine. These guys have done this all in school. And, of course, they got a lot of practice there. Scott Reed teaches this to his uh, students there at NSAC. you got to think that guy must be in on it as well. Well, another guy that should be mentioned in the water boil conversation at any time is Rick Russell, former coach at Nova Scotia Agricultural as well, Agricultural College, taught a lot of these people back in the day. He taught Scott Reed, no question about it. So you know Scott Reed's got a lot to rely on here in the kettle 
Caleb Boyle. A couple of women in this heat, including Heather Maciel and Janet Walker. You can see Janet Walker getting her pile of shavings, but Scott's already gone through the shavings. Now he's getting into the little thin ones, and where there's smoke, you know there's got to be some fire. Scott Reed's got to get, he knows he's got to get his kettle on as fast as possible. 3.16, not a bad time, but if you're going to be under three minutes, you've got to have that kettle on the heat as soon as possible. And now he's creating a little bit of a base opportunity here. He's about to put the can on, but you can see the, the staging and the platform that he's going to do with Sean Bugby doing the exact same thing. He's about to drop that can on, then he's got to start building up the sides. Interesting strategies here, how you get your kettle to stand the whole time, because see, once as a fire goes on and burns, a lot of times that platform you make will burn through. So they want to make sure they've got some big side pieces that'll hold that can up for the duration of the three minutes it's going to take to boil that kettle. I mean, if you spill your can, are there other cans that are available to be put on the fire? You're going to be out of the race, but you can still get in a can of water. You can. All, the only problem is it's a cold can, and you've got to go back through the whole thing of heating that thing up again. So usually if you knock your kettle over, typically you're out of the money. Now we just saw a shot of thought. There's another shot of Scott there. You can see him containing the fire with the big slabs of wood there, trying not to let it escape, and even using his body to keep the heat in. If you have a lot of wind on a certain day, uh, Bill, usually the trick is put those big shavings and stuff, or the big slabs on the side where the wind's coming from so that the fire will curl around, and you actually contain it like you say on the can. Just passing the 2 minute and 20 second mark, they still got to get the water boiled to beat the 316 set by Mario Brooklyn last heat. Scott Reed doing a fantastic job. Unorthodox kind of fire build he's had here. This is not a typical one for him, but it's getting close right now in his can. And well, Conrad, he's running out of oxygen as well. He's going to try and give it a little bit of hot air with his hat there and use the solar panels. And Scott Reed is working both sides of the fire, blowing as hard as he can. And Scott Reed wins the fire building competition, winning with a time of 2.45. There's something about you guys from Nova Scotia. You all know how to do that event, don't you? Yeah, we definitely do. A great guy named Rick Russell taught us well. He was our, my coach, and uh, he passed away, but um, he taught us really how to boil. It was his favorite event. It's been my favorite event. Now, you see uh, different strategies with different guys and women as well. Just tell me a couple, a couple of your secrets. Uh, well, I try to make my shavings within 30 seconds and have the can on. If I've got a boil started like that, I'm going to be under three or around three provided the wood is good and after that just small pencils and some shingles to keep the heat in that's all there is to it great job there by scott reed winning the fire build the only guy under three minutes you can see how he built his fire up and then just lay it around and do a whole lot of blowing and the crown pivotal point today folks on big boil connor from greenfield nova scotia on his way to a great cut but he cuts out and takes a dq in the hot saw and puts him out of the running well, that was a great sprint to the finish here in St. Stephen, New Brunswick at their International Lumberjack Competition. Our gas guzzler lumberjack of the day is Marcel Dupuis. Congratulations. Just tell me a little bit about your, about your day. Oh, well, uh, thank you very much. And uh, the day, well, it, it went very well, as you can see. Uh, it was quite tight there. It was quite nerve-wracking at the end of the kettle boil because I went first and I knew what kind of time I had. And I was trying to time and make see what the other guys were doing because there was a couple of possi possibility, like Mario could have won and Donald could have won. So. And it was a, a, a nail biter at the end there, so. Thanks, Marcel. Thank you very much. There's no feeling in the world like winning a lumberjack competition and taking home a couple of Echo products to boot. Congratulations to Janet Walker for winning the women's division, Jill Bourgeois, and all the other people that helped put this whole show together here in St. Stephen, New Brunswick. Another great job by the organizing committee here in St. Stephen, New Brunswick. I'm going to rib my good buddy Rod Cumberland right now. Marcel Dupuis, he's no longer up and coming. No longer up and coming. He's a ride. Beat the best of the field today. Mario Bork, Don Lambert, great lumberjack, but Marcel, best of them all. Come back again next time for more Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, only professional grade with five-year warranty. Crown, protect, maintain, save. K100, we make water burn. Yamaha, what kind of Yamaha are you? I'm gonna give you a trick in the kettle boil to make you a little bit quicker at it. When I do kettle boil, the thing you wanna do is get your kettle on the fire as soon as possible. To do that, you have to have your shavings ready as soon as you can. A lot of guys will split their block first, take the shavings from the inside. I don't, I save those two seconds and take my shavings right from the outside of the block. I'll usually find 
a split in the block, such as I have right here. So as I'm making shavings, usually I'll get two for the price of one. So on the word go, I'm making shavings just as fast as I can. The other thing I've done is I've modified my ax. Rather than just having one hand pushing on it, I've lengthened my handle here so I have two hands pushing as hard as possible. You make my shavings a whole lot quicker that way. 